Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna be sharing a very random assortment of all of my favorite things. I personally find that when YouTubers make favorites videos and they talk about their favorite new music or movies or food, then those kinds of videos are a lot more fun and dynamic to watch. So that's why we're gonna be talking about some random things. You wouldn't believe it, but the product that I had to show you guys as my favorite beauty product literally smashed yesterday as I was getting ready for this video. It fell off the table, of course, you know, what luck. This is my favorite makeup product probably over the last six months. This is the Ambient Lighting Bronzer. I use this after I contour and after I put on blush, I sweep this with a huge brush kind of all over my face. I go over the places where I contoured and I just kind of blend it out. It's kind of like putting on a tan, a glowy tan. It's honestly very good. I use this every time I do my makeup. Yeah, not anymore. Um, so this, the RMS Living Luminizer, this is the RMS Living, what the fuck? RMS Living, no, that's not even what it's called. It's called the Magic Luminizer. See, I was called it the Living Luminizer. That's what the other one's called. I got another one in a different shade. This one's gold. The other one is like more of a pearl. I didn't even explain what this was. Oh my God. Okay. So this is the RMS Living. If I could only use five makeup products. This is definitely one of them, and I've probably said that for the last like two years or so. It's just perfect. It adds the most natural looking glow to your face. I'm even applying it to demo. You see that? You see that? Yeah, Sonia, we can definitely see that. Very highlighted. Thank you, Sonia. Ta-da! I don't see the need for using a powder highlighter. Uh, to me now, it doesn't make sense because I'm like, why am I applying a powder if I'm trying to look dewy? This is an eyebrow gel by NYX called Control Freak. I've been using the Anastasia brow gel for many, many years because I found that it was the only eyebrow gel that could really hold my eyebrows in place. I have pretty long eyebrow hair. I've always felt weird saying that, but like how else do you explain it? They're really unruly, and that's why I have to hairspray them or gel them like twice a day. I don't know, is that excessive? <laughs> Maybe. This one's really good. It works just as well as the Anastasia one, and instead of $30, it's like three and sold at Target, so. The next thing I wanna get into is skincare, but before I do that, I just wanna explain why there's such a reoccurring theme of vitamin C. There was one time I remember tanning that I got hyperpigmentation on my nasal labial folds. I don't know what they're called. That name is so weird in my opinion. And so that's why I am supercharging my skincare routine with vitamin C now because I think that it's gonna help me and it has been helping. So these are my top two favorite vitamin C products that I have been integrating into my routine lately. One of them is by Rodiel. This was love at first sight, obsession at first use actually. I have a lot of cleansers that really dry my skin out to the point that my skin is squeaky after. And I don't really want that. I don't really want my skin to squeak. This cleanser doesn't bubble and lather and stuff like that, but it still removes all of my makeup at the end of the day at that. It smells really good and it just feels nice. It's more creamy. When I realized how much of it I've used, probably like 80%, I was like, yeah, okay, I gotta like cut down a bit. I asked you guys on Instagram for your recommendations of the best vitamin C serums, and this is one that I have been trying out and really love it. I use this mostly at night after I finish washing my face and applying my toner. If you have a recommendation of the best way to get rid of hyperpigmentation specifically, please share it with me. Next, I have two toners that I realize I can't really live without because these two improve my skin pretty drastically overnight, both of them. Not used together, but the first one is Paula's Choice 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant. And I have definitely spoken about this before. My friend recommended this to me like four years ago, said she got it on Amazon. I ran out of this toner initially and did not think anything of it until my pores were so large. I've always had pretty large pores around my cheeks here and this toner really does help with that. It doesn't entirely get rid of it, but it is the toner that has helped with my issues more than any other toner really that I can think of right now. This is a toner by Youth to the People, which is one of my absolute favorite brands. They are so cool, like their brand image and their actual products are so cool and great. This is the kombucha toner. This is lactic acid, glycolic acid, black tea, and tree bark. So those four ingredients, I already know, they all work really well for my skin. And this one is more gentle, so I'll use this one in the morning and sometimes at night. So this fun little thing right here is the Nebby Lift. And this is the world's first micro RF device that is actually non-invasive. I've heard about these devices all the time 
and I used to see a cosmetologist that would tell me about it. RF means radio frequency. Micro RF devices are usually used in like liposuction, so removing fat from certain areas of the body. It's used in cardiology, it's used in surgery to remove or rebuild tissue. So I feel like that's usually how we see micro RF devices is in surgical settings or at a dermatologist's office. It's always been a very professional type of invasive procedure. But this is the first non-invasive one that you can do yourself at home. I feel like somebody is going to scoff at me for saying this, but I use this every single day at 9am when I'm at my desk trying to answer emails and just do like boring stuff on my computer. I sit there like this. This is what I read about the product before I actually tried it, but confirmed for myself. It is so relaxing to use. Heat actually generates collagen regrowth. All of these little gold electrodes that you see here, they warm up and adjust to your skin, but they never overheat and they never burn your face. I talk a lot about microcurrent devices, and that's because they do wonders for me personally still. But microcurrent devices really focus on exercising and lifting the muscles deep in the face. Whereas RF devices regenerate your collagen and they can actually be used to get rid of fat as well. But I don't know how long you'd have to be sitting there trying to get rid of a pocket of fat. It comes with this gel. I'll do this for like five minutes on each side and really focus right here. I feel like it definitely erases the lines in my face, even about here where my eyes are. And most importantly for me, I feel like it does help a lot with my facial edema. So sometimes I will wake up and my face will be incredibly bloated. Three hours will go by and then it's normal again. I'll sit there and I will massage my face, I'll do a microcurrent, and then I'll do an RF with a neb lift. I also forgot to mention the fact that it looks like an Apple product. That was my first impression. Not only is it absolutely waterproof, but it's dust proof and scratch proof. And it's so simply designed that I feel like Apple could have probably done this or they would have done it the same way. It even automatically connected to my phone and then I was just able to watch a bunch of instructional videos and keep track of my battery. It's really cool. I feel like there's only so much that your skincare routine can do or like a face mask can do. It's really not going to change the structure of your face or get rid of anything that is happening deep in the layers of your skin. The reason that I ever got into using my Clarisonic brush to wash my face is because a cosmetologist told me that if I used one, it would pretty much solve all of my pore problems, and it did. My Clarisonic stopped charging and died, and only then did I learn that Clarisonic went out of business, and so I cannot replace my Clarisonic. So you guys, um, I just, I'm not in the loop with like what girls are out there doing, or like what people, because my boyfriend uses a Clarisonic too, and his broke. What are we doing, you guys? Your recommendations are always very welcome and very appreciated. Uh, remember when I told you guys that these favorites are gonna be really random? Okay, well we can begin that part now. This is a pack of buttons that I got on Amazon for like $3, and this makes me not have to wear a belt, and I like that because belts make me feel like I'm suffocating. I'm not sure how, but I only discovered these buttons through a TikTok video like three months ago, and where has this been all my life? I'm not sure. I'm gonna demonstrate how to use these, but I feel like everybody needs this in their life. Like, why don't... I don't know. My favorite fashion trend... It's not a trend. This has been alive and well for longer than all of us have combined. I'm kidding. Maybe not. I've been really loving button-up shirts, especially this pink one. I think button-up shirts are incredibly cool and flattering. Also, they're really soft and they just look cool. They look sophisticated and like you put effort in your outfit, which to me is important if I'm putting together an outfit because I'm usually in leggings and like workout stuff or just sweatpants or nothing. A pant trend that I've been really loving recently is carpenter pants. These ones are by Thrills, which is an Australian fashion label. Really cool with boots and like a shirt and over skinny jeans, okay? It's either carpenter pants or workout leggings and like nothing in between. I'm kidding. There actually is something in between. These are a new pair of jeans that I've been wearing a lot recently. They're by Rolas and I think that this is their collection with Sophia Ritchie. Very, very well done jeans. I'm so picky with my denim because I feel like 90% of the time, it's just jeans don't look the way that they're supposed to. Stamp of approval. I have two favorite pairs of sunglasses and I feel like I should just do a sunglass collection video because you guys would not believe how many pairs of sunglasses I own. I think that they just make every single outfit or even not even an outfit. They make your naked body look amazing. They're an accessory to your existence. The reason I'm showing you guys these is to communicate the fact that I really love brown 
sunglasses. These sunglasses are by... Um, True. Coraline Eyewear, and I'm almost 100% sure that these are uh, sustainable. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm also notorious for losing my sunglasses, so I could honestly talk about this for a long time because this topic is really important to me and really interesting, actually. Anyways, so these are roller skates. These roller skates are not exactly like every other roller skate on earth because they're meant to mimic an ice blade. If you're trying to roller skate but you want it to feel like you're ice skating or figure skating, you pretty much just have to use an ice skating boot but mount this plate onto it and the wheels. This is by Off Ice Skates. So you can go on the website and maybe they'll explain it a little bit better than I can. After this, I'm gonna roller skate and show you guys how cool I look. Also, I just wanted to say... And also, I just wanted to say... <laughs> Something I think a lot of people don't know is that you can't roller skate in your same ice skating boots. Even though this boot and my boot for ice skating could be exactly the same, I can't just take off this part and then put my ice blade on. I have to literally have two different sets. And I think that's so wasteful and stupid. Like, they just don't do that because you can't mount- I know all of the technical reasons, I, I get it. But like, that's still, that's so stupid. I, that is a need that needs to be filled. And if anybody out there wants to create a ice skating to roller skating convertible boot business with me, contact me. Cause I think that could definitely pop off. When it comes to music, my playlists on Spotify are just honestly so messy. I know a lot of people are like, I don't want to tell you my Spotify. You're going to see what I'm listening to. But I honestly don't care. I listen to like trash all the time. Go on my Spotify, I have trash music. But because a lot of people ask for it, I will link my Spotify playlist for you. Now the real plot twist is that I said like, movies and TV shows, I don't even watch TV. No, I really don't though, I just don't watch TV. You ever just like, listen to words come out of your mouth and you're like, how did that just, why? So that completes everything that I had to show you guys today. If you guys have any suggestions or questions, recommendations, anything, please leave them in the comments. And don't forget to turn your notification setting on so that you can get alerted when I post new videos. Such as the one that I'm going to post next week called 26 things I've learned in 26 years. I did a video like that two years ago, three years ago when I was a little bit younger than I am now. But now I have way more knowledge so I'm going to share that knowledge with you guys. I love you all very much and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.